Hi, you can know me as Matthias, and uh, this is my new podcast, and it's called How to Be a Better Human, and it's about what you can do to put your mind in the right place, how to feed your body, because I feel if your body is fueled upright and it has exercise, and your body is working really well, the rest will fall into place. Okay, let's get started with my, my basic outline of things. Okay, I don't have a guest. I am just going to talk for the time on here. So first of all, be grateful. Be grateful for what you have. Be grateful you are alive. Don't think about the things you don't have. Be grateful for, for what you do have, and you will be happier. If you're happier, the world will be happier because you are. I like to say I love to put a smile on someone's face make the world a better place and help change the world, the human race, one person at a time with a smile. It's very easy. And I've had lots of experience with people and traveling. And I have found that uh, the differences between Americans and the European countries, especially the Netherlands, is Americans are so isolated and don't want to join hands with the people, your fellow countrymen. I found that out the first day in Amsterdam. We were in an Indian restaurant and a table for... I think around seven or eight people was available. We had five in our party, and we we're sitting there, and then a couple of people were seated at our table. We didn't know them. And at first, I thought it was kind of unique, and I thought, oh, this is how they do it. <clears throat> I was open to it, and being open-minded was half the battle. And I made friends with the people that were seated at our table. Then another two people came, and they were seated at our table. It's not like in America where you have two people seated at a large table and then no one else is there. I really think that if you eat communally, it's much better for your spirit and for the human spirit altogether. I, I love that, actually. I met so many people in so many restaurants that way because it happens all over. I thought it, maybe it's just this one, but no, it's everywhere. So you meet people, you talk, and by the end of your meal, you have new friends. And I still contact people that I met that way on that trip in 2002. It took that long for me to discover this. I was, what, 42? Oh, uh, no. Yeah, 42. <laughs> I was recording with somebody, and Seabroy, Dr. Seabroy said, you've never been to Europe? I said, no, I can't afford to go. And he said, well, my job, I have extra frequent flyer miles, so... I'll pay for you to come and hang out with me in Netherlands. I'm going to go there and record and tour with his band. And I said, okay. I went there with $50. And wow, it was an eye-opening trip, a heart-opening trip. People said hello on the street, not like in America where they're afraid of everybody. 
it's uh, it was a really refreshing trip and an eye opener. I enjoyed that a lot. And you know, uh, <laughs> on buses, on trains, people would sit with you and just talk, just like you know, like you, like I love. I love to say hello, and people say hello back. It makes my day. Very simple, and everything started with that. Ever since then. And that was right after 9-11. And uh, when we went to the airport, you know, people with machine guns and checking your baggage and all that, just all that fear. When I got to Amsterdam, there was no fear. There was just people being people to people, if that makes sense to you. And so that always stuck with me. I started not being very happy with American ways after that. I discovered also after going to Germany to play some festivals and do some tour dates with my band, they're pretty much the same way, except they're smart. In Europe, I took German before this so I could learn how to say, where's the bathroom? <laughs> but um, our teacher was from, she was actually from Transylvania, but she went to school in Germany, in a Saxon school, and she always would make fun of the American education system. She was a teacher at Portland Community College, and uh, that's where I worked. And uh, I just have a different perspective than the average flag-waving American. It seems like America is the only place where people need to put an American flag on their house in the front yard to remind them who they pay taxes to. And it's the only place in the world that I know of that doesn't give you health care for your tax money, which is crazy. But the health care is, you know, for, for profit. And I'll get to that in a little bit. But I just want to start off. That's what started the change. Anyway, I have I've always eaten a lot. I was overweight. It caused me a lot of problems emotionally. I wasn't fat, but just bigger than most, and I had a belly. And it was all from what I put in my mouth, and basically just addicted to the wrong foods. So I have met, and I still have a lot of friends, like in Germany and all over Europe, Germany, Netherlands, and Denmark, and Belgium, and Spain, and uh, because of my music, and it's a real passport to friendship, and I notice people are different. In America, they contact you when they want something from you. The people from the other countries just contact you to say hello which is how I, I think it should be. And so keep moving, fast forward. I was eating, I drank a lot of beer. I ate a lot of ice cream. You know, it was on sale for two gallons for three or four bucks. And so I'd buy that. And because it was on sale, if it's a good deal, it's not going to be a good deal for your body. So... Fast forward, eating fried foods, uh, eating crap because it tastes good, and being addicted to sugar. I didn't drink soda pop. I went for the hard stuff. <laughs> but uh, I had a stroke, and it started with Bell's palsy. I think I had a small stroke in 2020, and one of my eyes didn't work anymore very well. I popped a blood vessel because of high blood pressure. 
and the high blood pressure, it turns out, was from what I ate. And if I was motivated, it's so easy to change that. So Christmas time, 2021, rolls around, right in the heart of COVID country. <laughs> I wake up one morning at 6 o'clock, I take a pee, go back to bed, I wake up at... 10, and I can hardly stand up on one side, and I can't talk very well, and I would had a stroke, the kind with the blood clots in your brain. So my girlfriend, I called her, and she said, do you want me to take you to the emergency? Because I wasn't driving by that time, because my eyesight was really bad, because of the high blood pressure blowing my blood vessels out and bleeding in my eye. So I said, let me check and see if I had health care, because when Trump was president and I went on unemployment, I, he, he gave me just enough extra health care, my extra unemployment, so it disqualified you from Obamacare. The guy is just bad news. He doesn't care about a country. He just cares about him winning his I'm better than you game and that's not the way a leader should be. If he's for the country, he would be for the country. So Biden had been elected by then because I had turned down for Obamacare the whole time I was on unemployment, about eight months. Had a great job at the college for 20 years. That ended with COVID. And um, so then finally when I had no money, Coming in, nothing at all, I qualified for Obamacare. But before that, Biden, he had restored everybody's health care that was their health care when they were working for a certain amount of time. But they had a nine-month waiting period to get in. And so it took a, a life-threatening stroke to uh, get me into the hospital. If you want to be in the get in the hospital quick, just have a stroke. No, I don't. I don't uh, encourage that. But if you keep eating crap and eating processed foods and eating fast food and ice cream and high fat content stuff and not exercising, really, the uh, sitting on my butt for a year with COVID was just hell for me because my job was very physical. I used to deliver copy paper, boxes of copy paper with a minivan and a hand truck. I would do 8,000 cases per term. That's every nine weeks. Did that for years with lots of walking, but it's not the same as working out. Anyway, I'm in bad shape pretty much, and uh, I was always an athlete as a kid. I started young, playing baseball at age five and played every sport every year, basketball, baseball. And starting in sixth grade at age 11, I played football. I went out for it the year before, but about two days into the very hard physical training, the coach said, how old are you? And I said, oh, I'm 10. And asked me when my birthday was, and he said, I'm sorry, you're doing great, but you're too young, you'll have to come back next year. So I did go back next year and played football from the time I was 12 and through my teens. So I had a good base of, you know, being physically active and muscle tone, I lifted weights. I, I saw Grand Funk and on TV when I was like 11 and I saw Mark Farner have muscles and I thought, I want to look like that. And so I had got a weight set for Christmas and lifted weights. Anyway, moving on, I uh, go into the emergency room after a stroke and it took my blood pressure. And you know, I hadn't been to a doctor since I was 14. I just just didn't want to go. 
I went to a doctor to get uh, have a vasectomy at age 35, but that doesn't really count as a physical. So they're taking my blood pressure, and the nurse's face was lighting up like the bells were dinging. All these doctors gathered around me, and I said, wow, what's, what's going on? They said, your blood pressure is 289 over 169. I said, is that high? They said, you should be dead. One nurse said, you're not dead, so God has a plan for you. So I'm trying to make the best of that. I, those words always stuck with me. They said, you're a miracle. I said, well, do I get a trophy or my picture on the wall? They said, if you walk out of here, you will. They said, how'd you get here? And I said, well, my girlfriend dropped me off. I walked in. You walked in, they said. I said, yeah, I don't feel bad at all. And they said, that's the, you know, that's how Widowmaker heart attacks happen. So they, uh, put me in, you know, in the ER in a room and monitored my blood pressure and then took me for a CT scan, the big donut, and then they took me for an MRI and they said, are you claustrophobic? I said, yes, and my girlfriend said, he's really claustrophobic, give him, dope him up. <laughs> so they gave me Ativan and I thought they could have given me a sex change, I wouldn't care. <laughs> I would have had my new clothes, but <laughs> the procedure, I wouldn't care. And yeah, yeah, I joke about it because now it's kind of funny and well, that's how I deal with crisis. I'm a comedian. I said one time, I'm miserable enough for comedy and that's how I became a comedian. Anyway, something happened after the stroke, after I spent Christmas in, in the hospital and when I got out, I just had an epiphany. The ER doctors put me on a new path. And it took a little while to adapt to it, but I started seeing a lot of videos on TikTok and on YouTube, which are now, I think they're gone, because the World Health Organization said, Oh, they go against our our policy, but whatever. I learned a lot in the time it was all available. And that may be why they want to ban TikTok, because the other health remedies that aren't traditional really, really work. And uh, I start the day off with drinking, a uh, tablespoonful of olive oil and cayenne pepper mixed up with one squeezed lemon on top of that. But before that, I start the day off with one tablespoonful of apple cider vinegar and water. All of a sudden, after I started doing that for about a month, I didn't get hungry and I didn't crave food anymore. I had horrible cravings forever because I, my mental would always remember how good a jack-in-the-box taco was. Because I'd stop there. I would stop at fast food when I worked. I drove a minivan and delivered to nine campuses the paper and print jobs. And I would pass like Popeye's, Burgerville, Burger King, McDonald's, and I would stop at two or three of those places every day. That stuff will kill you. Even the stuff they say, oh, it's healthy. If it's not, if you know, what healthy is, healthy food doesn't come in a box. It grows in the, the ground. And I quit putting protein powder in my my smoothie, which I drank every day with with a certain brand of protein powder and chocolate milk in my coffee and orange juice, all really high in sugar. 
So I quit doing that. They were thinking I'm, you know, pre-diabetic, and I found out how to stop the insulin resistance and to reverse it by by not eating like a pig all day long. Number one, you got to give that insulin pump a chance to stop and let your body do what it's supposed to do. You realize that the human body has not changed design since it since it happened, since the first man. The body is the same. The organs are the same. The only thing that has been different is the outside things, what you put into the body. And when the body was first designed, there were no grocery stores. So people ate what they got, and it was not processed. And uh, my girlfriend was a, is vegetarian, now she's vegan. I learned a lot about eating from her, so I just kind of adapted her stuff. So I make a smoothie with frozen berries, couple leaves of kale and two tablespoons of flaxseed, two tablespoons full of chia seeds and half an apple. And I do that every day. And the peel of the apple will slow down your digestive system enough to where it can actually, my A1C after doing this was 5.2. Pre-diabetes didn't start till 5.7. So I was very happy about that. I don't eat ice cream anymore. I don't eat sweets, and cakes, once in a while. But not every day. I don't eat it. You know, when you're addicted to sugar, you eat a meal, then you want something sweet. But uh, I've learned so much from these videos you know, don't put milk on bananas. It's toxic. Not toxic, but it's not the best thing for you. I don't eat bananas like I do. I used to too either. But, you know, make yourself physically, well, I exercise also. I bought a exercise bike, a cheap one, 100 bucks, and I I would spend five sessions at 15 minutes per day each time per day in between playing drums for 15 minutes and I feel much better. I've lost 100 pounds and I don't crave sweets anymore. Then my brain started becoming much better and I started waking up and stretching and showing my gratitude for the universe. And really, I have a lot to be thankful for. I have a lot to be grateful for and people that have helped me. And I just like to put that out there in the morning to start my day when I stretch. Stretching is a, another great thing to do when you first wake up. Don't just roll out of bed. Get those muscles stretched. Breathe deep. I can't stress deep breathing enough. Breathe in and force it out. Force out that overnight air that's stuck in your lungs. It's a new day. And it's maybe a better person. Treat people this way, when you like to, you know, I see so many grumpy people, and yes, they probably have things on their mind, but if you try to be happy and try to bring joy to the planet, it will make you happier and hopefully make you not so grumpy. You know, how to be a better human. Americans have a hard time being a good human. Facebook is a perfect example of what kind of jerks people are. 
everybody's got their opinion, everybody hates this and they hate that. Humans are the only species, the only creatures on this planet that destroy the planet for profit and destroy others for fun. Humans don't work with nature. They work against nature. You know, bugs have a, insects have a purpose, and if you let them do their purpose, and the animals, they're not pests. You know, for some reason, people want to have everything super clean and no bugs. And just like I was talking about with the uh, tables at a restaurant in Europe, they you know, live, live with them, not get rid of them. It's just pretty easy. If you let it happen, it will happen. But there are so many societal norms that keep pounded in your head as a from your when you're a child, you know, um, that America is the best country in the world, the most free, and really, it's really no different than any place else except for real. There are a few that are not that way at all. But for the most part, yes. Every people always say, Oh, I can you know, America is so free we can own guns. It's our right to own guns to protect ourselves from the government. In some countries you can walk into a convenience store, buy a Glock pistol, a six pack of beer, and a sandwich and walk out the same day. And there aren't mass shootings in those countries. It's only right here in America where that happens. I think because other people are more educated because education is really that in other countries. Some, some countries require you go to school as a kid for six days a week. And you go to school from during a work time, like eight in the morning, until five at night. That eliminates daycare, which costs too much for people to work low paying jobs to afford. And there's no obligations. You should be obligated to the world. Obligate yourself to making people smile and the world will be a better place. And I think that's all I'm going to say about all this right now. You can digest whatever. I didn't have a script. I just have this uh, idea and uh, decided to make this new channel. So thank you. I'm Matthew. And I will talk to you next time on how to make the world a better place, how to be a better human. Thank you, and good day.